So uh, before diving deep into what is Redux and how it is used, it becomes essential for us to understand why uh, Redux came into existence in the first place itself. Like what is the problem that it was solving? So uh, if we go back in the history a bit, we can uh, see that Facebook was using a MVC based architecture for its application. What is MVC? MVC basically stands for model, view, and controller. Uh, MVC is neither a framework nor some piece of code written somewhere, but it is basically a software design pattern. And in the software design pattern, what happens is that we basically separate or divide our whole application into three basic components, namely controller, model, and view. So what is a view? A view is something that a user sees and interacts with. So if you head over to any web application, you can see many interactive elements are present uh, in, the, uh, in the application like buttons, input boxes, forms, images, etc. Right? So they all form a part of the view component, right? It is a, a presentational layer, or you can think of it as all the UI logic that is seen in the uh, web application forms a part of the view component. A model component stores the data or the information for that application. It also contains the logic that is required to run the application. This component can be presented uh, independently without the views as well. So all the data related logic resides in the model component. And finally, the controller component. So controller component acts as an interface between the model and the views. So they interact with the views and updates the model. And once the data in the model updates, it will trigger an action that will update a view. Views can also uh, update the data present uh, in the model component directly without going through the controller. So there are two ways of changing the data in a model, either by going through the controller component itself or directly via the, uh, directly to the model component from the view. And finally, there could be external uh, actions that can trigger the controller components too, which in turn can change the data and uh, and, and decide what should be uh, rendered in the view component. So for example, let us think of an application where uh, we have a counter application and whenever the user clicks on the button, the uh, count value increases by one, right? So we generally have a button and on that button, we generally have, let's say a uh, on-click handler. And inside that on-click handler, that function, we perform some kind of logic to actually update the state, right? So in this case, we are going to update or increment the value of count by one and then we are going to update the count variable as well. So the count variable could be, let's say counter. Initially it was one, but after the logical operation, the counter value uh, becomes two. So if you consider the MVC architecture, the button forms the view part of the architecture because this is the component which the user interacts with. The on click handler can form the controller part of the MVC architecture while the logic and the uh, and and the uh, and the logic that updates the count and stores it in the counter variable can form the model component. So this is how a uh, general MVC architecture functions. Now, 
when facebook started to scale this application that was following the mvc pattern it soon started to face some issues uh, mainly on their chat and notification features so this issue was related to the unpredictable state management of the mvc structure at scale All right so if we consider this uh, mvc's uh, structure in the scaled version uh, that facebook was using we start to see that uh, application can have multiple uh, model components right and it can have multiple view components as well each containing its own data and logic to change the data and each view component containing its own ui logic the actual issue started when this multiple model components started to interact with multiple view components and the view components started to modify the data inside the model directly or to the controller so we know that uh, the data inside a model can be changed either uh, through the views going to the controller triggering a uh, action and then changing it or it can uh, change the data directly inside the model as well these are the only two possible ways right now when we scale this pattern of uh, changing the data from the view via the controller or directly we start to see some issues because it was becoming hard to understand how the data inside the model was changing was it through the view going through the controller and then updating it or was it uh, updated directly by the views itself so it became a little unpredictable in nature and on how the data was updating and also this bidirectional flow of data between the view and the models increased the complexity and made it harder to understand the flow of data and the debugging process overall right so for example uh, let us consider that uh, a data change in model 2 will trigger a re-render in v1 v1 in turn uh, updates the data in model 3 and then it will trigger a change in view 3 and so on right so we can quickly see that how this will start to create a cascading effect in terms of pre-render and it can even lead to an infinite uh, loop of re-renders within the view component itself so to resolve this issue facebook uh, proposed the flux architecture So unlike the uh, bi-directional and the cyclical flow of data in the MVC architecture, uh, the focus in the Flux architecture was to have a unidirectional flow of data. The architecture had some parts, namely action, dispatcher, store, and view. And it followed some rules that helped the Flux architecture to maintain that uh, unidirectional flow in a scalable environment. So we have some action uh, action creators here. And this action creator have basically some helper methods that define what kind of change do we want to see in the store. Right, then we have the dispatcher. So what uh, it basically does is it sends all the action to the store. So basic use case of dispatcher is to uh, share, send, the action that is present to this uh, store to uh, update uh, the store with the appropriate data. After the store updates themselves in response to the action that they have uh, got, they emit a change event. So after the data is changed, depending on the action type, they trigger a change event. And we have some views uh, called as controller views. Controller views. And this controller view listen for this change events. And as soon as they hear that something has changed in the store, they retrieve the new data from the store and provide that new data to the entire tree of child views. 
So that's the whole flow of flux and how the data was aimed to uh, go through this process. So views only react to changes in store. Stores can only get updated through dispatchers. Dispatchers can only be triggered by actions and actions can only get triggered by views. So these were the three main components here, uh, action, dispatcher, store, and views. And this was the uh, flow that uh, Flux created so as to maintain that unidirectional flow. Now, if we consider the Flux uh, architecture with React, we can see that uh, it is very similar to the uh, architecture that uh, Facebook uh, introduced. But here, the views are nothing but the React component itself. So there could be many React components that are rendering different views. And all of those views can trigger an action. That action gets to the stores via the dispatcher. And after the stores update itself based on the action, the controller retrieves the new updated data from the store and it passes down back to the React component so that the new data can be rendered again. So we can introduce as many stores uh, as we want to handle different logic operations. And we can introduce many view components in the form of React components. But the basic flow, right, is rem uh, re basic flow remains the same. It remains unidirectional no matter how many uh, view components or logical components in the form of multiple stores you introduce with Flux. So this was a scalable solution. So now we know that why Facebook moved from the MVC based structure to Flux based ar architecture so that it could scale up with a, a proper predictable state management flow. Right, MVC was uh, creating some issues uh, with scalability because it didn't have that proper state management. Then they proposed Flux. And the idea was to have the uh, data flow in an interactional uh, manner. Uh, it doesn't care like how many stores or views you introduce the flow will always be unidirectional. So that was the main idea behind Flux. And since Flux was not a framework as such, it was also a different library altogether, different from React. So what it allowed was, it allowed different uh, implementations for state management based on uh, uh, Flux architecture to be developed. And and uh, out of the uh, various implementations based on Flux architecture for state management, Redux was uh, becoming the preferred choice eventually. So Redux, what it did was it combined the ideas of Flux and it used context from the React um, ecosystem to create an open source management library. So this is how uh, Flux, uh, so this is how Redux came into uh, existence.